Gold or silver, which one would you rather have in the event of a bank failure? Now, you might think, naturally, why would I be worried about a bank failure? This has never happened in my lifetime. And yet, in the last week, we've seen three of them. There's a possibility that we're going to see a whole bunch more over the next two or three or four weeks, maybe maybe faster. I don't know. We're going to find out. But the question is, which would you rather have, gold or silver? We're going to talk about that right now. Let's go. Hello, hello, everybody. It is Jeremy Whaley here from Trade My Show. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic today. And as we continue kind of giving some coverage here of this uh, Silicon Valley bank failure and all the aftermath of it, the question has come out, which would be better to have? Should I have gold on hand or should I have silver on hand? And so I want to talk about that in this video and just kind of talk about the pros and cons of each. And then specifically, I also want to go into what would happen in the event that the entire fiat currency system fails, which very well might happen, and we were to go back to a gold-backed currency. Which would you rather have, gold or silver? So we're going to talk about that as we get into this video. Before we do that, if you haven't subscribed, then please get yourself subscribed here on uh, the YouTube channel, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you are there. And of course, if you haven't visited us over at trademaestro.com, then please head over to trademaestro.com and uh, sign up for something for free. So you can get onto a mailing list and we can go from there. All right, let's get over here into our charts and let's start talking about some stuff. So what you're looking at here is you are looking at a chart of gold. And if I zoom in on this today, uh, you see that gold is taking off very nicely. Yes, yes, this is exactly what we wanted. Well, that is if you owned gold. Gold is taking off nicely as we're starting to see a fleet, a flight, a disappearance, a leaving of risk and looking for some assets that could be more secure. So naturally, gold is a... Um, you know, kind of a natural place to, to do that. Now, we kind of saw this coming, and I'm going to pull up the ETF GLD. Oops, that didn't do it. Let's try that again. Let's get rid of the pen. GLD. Still didn't do it. Huh. How about we do that? There we go. GLD, third time's a charm. And the reason I'm pulling this up is I want to show you that we actually had this trade set up as an ETF trade, not as a spot trade, but as an ETF trade. And so we were set up to trigger into this trade a couple of days ago. This was on Friday. And of course, today we gapped up bigly on here and we closed today right around $178. So um, this trade, I, I believe, based on the chart, based on our previous analysis that we've done on it, our target for this is about 186.30 or roughly in that ballpark for the ETF. Okay. So understand the difference in an ETF and spot price. Spot price is the current market price that it's trading for in the spot market. And um, the ETF GLD, this is going to be a fraction of that. Usually one tenth is what it's going to be uh, working out for you here. And uh, basically that's just buying a security, in this case, an exchange traded fund that holds the gold. In this case, it's, it's gold. Um, it could be silver, could be other stuff as well. So in this case, it's gold. All right, so let's get back to spot gold here because I want to talk about this a little bit. And um, actually, I guess we really don't need the chart for this part. The first part of the question is, which one would I rather have in the event of a bank failure? Would I rather have silver or would I rather have gold? And I think the most obvious answer here is the one that you can divide out the easiest. So that would be silver because you can break down silver pretty small. Um, both of them will come in a one ounce uh, coin of some sort or a one ounce round as we like to refer to it. But silver, since a one ounce silver round is going to be worth about 20, 25, maybe $30 an ounce, uh, depending on when it is in the market. Uh, since that's the, the nature of the value, it's a, it would be a lot easier if we had to go back to using gold or silver. It would be a lot easier to take one silver round down to your local Kroger or your local grocery store and buy milk and cookies with it. Uh, that'd be a lot easier than taking one gold ounce, which would be worth, you know, $1,800 or more. So it's just a lot harder to divide out the gold. So in the event that we needed to replace our money very quickly, silver would be a much easier tool to do that with, okay? But there's another reason that I think silver is a little bit better than gold. 
And the reason comes comes down to the idea of fiat currency possibly disappearing. Now, I don't know if you believe this is going to happen or not. I've heard both sides of the argument. I can make both sides of the argument. Economically speaking, I can make the argument for fiat currency and lots of uh, currency elasticity, as they like to say. And I can also make the money, or make the argument for sound money and saying that our current dollar bills should be backed by gold or silver. So I can make the, both sides of the argument. So let's just take one side for a minute and let's say that, you know, this current banking crisis, and of course it, it never has happened up until now, but let's just say that this current banking crisis makes everybody realize that fiat money is fake and we shouldn't be putting all of our faith in fiat money. And so suddenly what happens? Government comes out and says, we're going to abolish the Federal Reserve. We're going to get rid of this fiat currency. And instead we're going back to what the constitution says, and we're going to actually have um, either gold or silver as our currency, or we're going to have paper uh, that is backed by gold. Okay, so let's say that we went back to sound money. Which would be better? Which would be better to have? Would it be better to have gold or would it be better to have silver? And if you listen to a lot of people on the internet, especially all over YouTube and whatnot, um, they often will make the argument that if we were to go back to sound money, that the value and the price of gold would skyrocket. And I understand that. I understand where they're coming from on that. But here's the thing. It wouldn't. And I'm going to show you right now that the better investment would actually be silver because silver would have the opportunity to fluctuate. So for two reasons, I think silver is a better investment. Number one, in the event you had to spend it, it's more denominatable. Is that a real word? I don't know. I may have made that up, but it's easier to denominate or to, to divide it into smaller chunks. You know, an ounce of gold is $1,800 or maybe $2,000 an ounce. It's a lot harder to break that up than it is a 20 ounce round of silver. Okay. So that's the first reason I think silver is better. Second reason is if we went back to a gold standard, gold stops moving. And let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna come back to our chart here for just a minute. And um, actually let's get off of our uh, exchange traded fund. Let's get back to gold, gold. And I'm going to get rid of these moving averages for a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in time. I'm going to take this to a weekly chart because that'll go a lot faster in our little journey back in time. And I want to show you what has happened with the value of gold over all these years. Okay. So it was about 50 years ago, 1971, when Richard Nixon, without the approval of the American people, without the approval of Congress, took us off the gold standard. A lot of people don't even realize we were ever on a gold standard, but we were. It's happened many times in U.S. history. Um, President Andrew Jackson put us on a gold standard, took us off of a fiat currency and put us on gold standard. Then in the uh, during the Civil War, we actually went off of that gold standard for a little while uh, in order to fund the war, war. And then we went back on a gold standard. They fixed the price of gold at $19 an ounce. And then in the 1930s, Franklin Roosevelt, he decided he was going to take us off the gold standard for a brief while, confiscate all the gold, and then reissue it at around $36 an ounce. So what that really did is it inflated our currency. The money that used to exchange for $19 an ounce for one, $19 for one ounce of gold, now suddenly that same money would only exchange $36 for one ounce of gold. Now you say, oh, gold became worth more. No, gold didn't become worth more. The buying power, the dollar became worth less. And that's what I want to show you in this chart here. Okay. So if you go back in time, go back to the 19, uh, the 1900s, late 1900s, and you can see all the way through here, 18, uh, sorry, that's 1927. We can, this chart goes all the way back to, um, 19, 18, 1877, all the way through, and we get to September of 1930, and the price changes. And if you look here, it's about $19.20 an ounce, okay? So you can see it's flatlined. That's my point here. The dates are really irrelevant. But this is flatlined. That is the price of gold. Okay, it's $19.20 an ounce, somewhere in there. And I say somewhere in there because I can't actually remember the exact value number. It was roughly that. I bet it's on the chart. Yes, it was $20, $20.69. All right, there you go. Uh, and then you notice there was some fluctuation in here. You see where the prices were fluctuating, and then it got fixed right here. And you'll notice there's a couple stair steps up and down, but that's like just a few cents. It's not a very big fluctuation. And we stayed like that from 1934. That's 1934 across the bottom of the screen here. All the way through 1970. 
And in 1970, you see that the chart starts to change over here. Can you see that? Okay, we're, we're totally flat. We're basically at $36 an ounce. Okay, until, look at this. Oh, oh, gold, it's becoming so valuable, right? No, gold's not becoming valuable. What's happening, folks? The U.S. dollar is becoming worthless, literally worthless. Not just worth less, but worthless. And the inflation that kicked in here is unlike anything FDR could have ever dreamed about. I'm trying to just get it all on the screen. Okay. So from 1970, it started to float just a little bit in here. And I don't really have an answer as to why, but it was in 1971 when we officially went off the gold standard. And you can see what happened from $36 an ounce all the way to 1980. Gold was trading at 800, almost $880 an ounce. Okay, now that's some serious inflation. Okay, from 36 to 880, gold is so valuable, right? Well, it is, but what changed is not the value of gold. What changed is the value of the dollar went down. Okay, and you can see on the chart here that it actually started to correct. And during the 1980s, the valuation came way, way back down as we kind of got some of the inflation under control. And moving forward, it actually stayed relatively flat until the year 2000, okay? Which I'm looking for that on the screen here. And there it is right there, right here. Okay, so in the year 2000, the value of gold was around 280, $250 to $280 an ounce, kind of fluctuating. And from that time forward, we have 10 x again. Gold is just so valuable, right? Well, no, this is what they done. This is what they have done to our currency, to our dollars. Okay, by 2011, gold was hitting $1,900 an ounce for the first time, and fast forward over here to current time. There you go. We have peaked out over $2,000 an ounce a couple of different times, and we're currently right around $1,900. All right, so. What's the point in showing you all this stuff with gold? Here's what I want you to understand. If we go back to a gold standard, we go back to like 1936 charts. Not the price. I think the price will probably be, if it ever happens, I think it'll be fixed around $2,000 to $2,500 an ounce. These people that are coming out and saying that gold should be, you know, $40,000 or $50,000 an ounce. Look, it might be in their formulas, but it doesn't really matter because in the same way, in 1930s, uh, FDR came out and said, you know, gold is now going to be worth this. This is what the dollars in exchange for. They're not revaluing gold. What we're going to have revalued if it happens is they're going to peg the dollar to it. And so whoever is making that decision, they will decide what that value is. It has nothing to do with what we think the valuation is. They're literally just going to print however much, much currency they're going to have. And they're going to say, okay, we're going to peg this to the value of gold at such, at X, whatever that price is, okay? So I, I personally think it's gonna be between 2,000 and 2,500. That's what I think will happen. All right, so when that happens, the price of gold will literally flatline. It will not go up, it will not go down. It might fluctuate just a little bit, like within a few cents, but not enough to justify getting into. And so you say, well, I would wanna load up on gold, right? Well, you wouldn't need to because you would have paper money that is directly convertible for gold. It's what money was supposed to be. It's in lieu of gold, I have this money. I can go exchange it directly for gold or I can carry the paper, which is a lot easier to exchange, a lot easier to walk around with. So in the event of bank failures, which one would be better? Well, first of all, I think silver is more practical because silver, you can, again, you can break down the denomination. It's a lot easier to deal in smaller quantities. Okay, so that's the first thing. And then I think silver is more valuable because if we go back to a gold standard, then silver actually has room to fluctuate. So let's look at that really fast here. Let's pull up our silver chart and we're gonna do the exact same thing, although I'm gonna do it very quickly here for you. At least I'm gonna try to do it quickly. Um, look at the same kind of concept here. What if we went back in time into the 1930s and let's do that. And what you will see is, sil oh, look at that. Silver changed value. Now I know it's it's more of a little line. You don't see the nice clean candlesticks with all the open high low close. But in 1803, let's go back to 1803, silver was worth a dollar thirty an ounce. Okay, and then it went down in value. 
by 18, uh, whatever year that was, 1880s, it was down to around 40 cents an ounce. And then it went up and then it went down. And look at that. Silver is fluctuating. Now, one of you might think to yourself, well, I don't want to buy silver because it might fluctuate. But here's the thing. It needs to fluctuate. If you want to have an investment go up in value, it has to fluctuate. It can't stay flat. Okay. If you want something that's going to stay flat, then buy gold after a uh, gold standard comes in. Actually, you can buy it right now. When you buy gold, what you're doing is you're taking a snapshot in time and you're saying, this is what I'm locking it in at. When you buy silver, it still gives you the opportunity to have some float there in the event that we go back to sound money system where gold is the standard, silver can still float. And take a look at what happened here throughout the early 1900s. So in the 1930s, uh, silver was trading at one point around 60 cents uh, per ounce. It dropped back down to around 30 to 40 cents an ounce. And then it really took off. I mean, 30, 40 cents up to 90 cents, up to $1.30 again. And then all the way in here, I don't know if you can see it, but there was a lot of fluctuation going up as high as $2.50 an ounce. And then you get into more charting, um, more recent charting, where we start to actually have uh, candlesticks and stuff. And uh, what you see is you see the price of silver drop down to $1.30, and then it really started to skyrocket. Now you say, okay, well, silver was really valuable here, right? Well, here's what happened. Here's where the gold standard disappeared for us here. Come on, Penn, work with me. There we go. Uh, this is where the gold standard, where we went off the gold standard. And so in the same way that gold went up, silver went up, and it did, a lot, did it remarkably, I mean, huge, huge gains uh, at our peaks up here at $48 an ounce. So if you went from $1.75 to $48 an ounce, yeah, that's pretty good size, pretty good size gain, right? But again, what was really happening, what was really happening is the dollar was becoming worth less and less. Okay, that's what really happened. So what is my takeaway here? Look, I like gold and silver, okay? I've been buying silver for better part of a decade. And I'm um, involved in a silver company where um, we deal with silver on different levels. So I'm a big fan of gold and silver. Uh, if I had to say which would be better in the event of a bank failure, if you had to say I have to, I have to transact with one of these, I would say silver. It's more easy to, to get smaller denominations. It's easier to transact. If we were to go back to a sound money system and the dollar were to get pegged to the gold standard again, which one would be better? I would say silver. Why? Because silver still has room to fluctuate. Now, would silver fluctuate as much under a gold standard as it does now? And the answer is probably not. It's highly unlikely. Despite what you hear out there on the internet, it's highly unlikely. Uh, all metals are going to be relatively stable in the event that we go back to a gold standard. So um, just like what you saw over the first you know, 100 years or so on this chart, you had some fluctuation. And it, it was decent. I mean, you went from 40 cents to 80 cents. That's more than 100% gain. You can make some profit on that for sure, uh, but you're just not going to see these wild volatility fluctuations that a lot of people are, are anticipating. I just don't think that that's practical. I don't think that's what you're going to see. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you've learned something. It's a different way to think about gold and silver. Most people, uh, they just kind of talk about what they think the valuation should be. And very rarely do they actually go back to say, what would happen if we pegged the price? And understand where I'm coming from here. I'm talking about in a hypothetical world, a hypothetical country where economically speaking, we pegged the value of the dollar to an ounce of gold. And if we did that, the number one, gold would stop, stop fluctuating. It would not go up or down in value. It would be fixed. Okay. And anybody who says otherwise is just naive because that's just the way it works. Okay. That's the whole nature of pegging it. It's fixed. It no longer floats. And if that happened to the gold standard, then silver would stabilize substantially. You would not see these big 30 and 40% swings like you're seeing now. Instead, you would see a much more stable uh, price, but silver would still have room to fluctuate, okay? So that's kind of the big takeaway there. Now, we can anticipate, we can debate in another series of videos whether or not we'll ever get back to a gold standard, whether or not we should go back to a gold standard. Um, we can debate all that separately. It's a different conversation. But now you have the answer. Which one is better in the middle of a bank failure, gold or silver? And hopefully 
you understand. All right, so if you guys want to learn some more about this kind of stuff, uh, be sure to subscribe. If you're here on YouTube or on Facebook, then like or subscribe, whichever one you need to do. And if you're watching the website or somewhere else, then do whatever action is there for you to do uh, so that you can get all these updates and all of these videos, okay? Thanks for watching. I look forward to sharing some more with you in the future. And until next time, happy trading to all of you. We'll talk to you soon.